everyone. Good morning. What a beautiful season just to be thankful. God is good all the time, all the time. And I'm so happy to be here to finish this series. And I'm going to start with a message for the Spanish speakers. It's going to be in Spanish. Si quieres audífonos para escuchar el mensaje de hoy, tenemos traducción en vivo disponible. Puedes ir a la mesa de bienvenida y hay audífonos para, es, para escuchar. I don't know if you know, but every Sunday we have real-time translation available for our Spanish speakers. So that's why I said. Okay, I want to ask you something. Have you ever heard about the Thanksgiving? No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, it's my, my bad. <laughs> Have you ever heard about the red car effect? Have you ever heard about it? Yeah, yes, maybe no. Okay, let me explain a little bit of, of what is the red car effect. Is that when you are thinking maybe about getting a car, and you are thinking about a red car, you will start seeing red cars all around. Like you are, oh, one more, and one more, and one more, and one more. Okay, that's an effect, the red car effect. But today, as we are closing our Raw Conversation series, I want to share with you another effect that I call the God's goodness effect. And actually, that effect is the door to something we are familiar with and we are about to celebrate this week, Thanksgiving. Are you ready to start? Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for this great opportunity just to be here, to listen to your words, to be able to open our Bibles, and just getting to know what is your will, because we know that it's good, it's perfect, and it's pleasant. I pray, God, that you will speak to our hearts, that we will be ready just to know what are you calling us to do. In your name, I pray. Amen. Okay, so, talking about Thanksgiving, we are going to find in the scripture some key words together. We are going to visit some friends uh, who are in the Bible, and they also had raw conversations with God. And we are going to be talking about three key words that are repeat, remember, and rejoice. Can you repeat them with me? Repeat, remember, and rejoice. Okay, but first, thank you very much. But first, let's remember what we have learned the past seven weeks. So please, this is going to be really fast. Fast your seat belts because we are going to run. Ready? Okay, week one. You, you can see the information in the slides. Week one. Pastor Rene shared that Habakkuk didn't give the silent treatment to God. He answered, he was asking honest questions. Week two, Pastor Rod was sharing that sometimes God says no, but it's an opportunity to grow, to love, and to trust. Week three, Pastor Rene was sharing that Habakkuk was wrestling with God, but also embracing him, knowing that everything, all things, had a purpose. Week four, Pastor Matt was sharing with us what should we do when God, God's answer is wait. And he said, we are called to remember who he is. He is good and faithful. Week five, Pastor Rene shared with us that in the waiting, God wants to transform us. He called us to examine ourselves and look for greed, deception, violence, drunkenness, and idolatry in our lives. In week pastor six, Pastor Rod said, maybe nothing changes on the outside, but everything can change on the inside. Habakkuk was reminded of the goodness of God, and that caused him to worship. And last week was week seven, and Pastor Rene was sharing what if what we are expecting doesn't happen? Even if that happens, God is good. Yes. So today, 
we are going to finish this series with me introducing to you some of my friends that are in the Bible. I'm sure that some of them are your friends too. And these friends had a raw conversation with God too. Are you ready for the first one? Okay. Let's come and meet Job. Let's find out his character. How was Job? In Job chapter 1, verse 1 says, There was a man named Job who lived in the land of us. He was, pay attention to this, blameless. That means a man of complete integrity. He feared God and stayed away from evil. And feared means that he knew God's law and he was so happy, really joyful to follow God's law. So that was Job, his life. Let's see how, what, how his life was. Job chapter 1, verses 2 and 3 says, He had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, and 500 female donkeys. He also had many servants. He was, in fact, the richest person in that entire area. Mm, he was rich. He was fearing God. It was a whole package, right? Okay, let's find out what happened to his life. He was tested. Job chapter 1, verse 6 says, one day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord, and the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth, blameless. That means a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job has good reason to fear God. Verse 10, verse 10, you have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But let's read verse 11. But reach out and take away everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. Verse 12. All right, you may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's presence. One day, when Job's sons and daughters were feasting at the oldest brother's house, a messenger arrived at Job's home with this news. Your oxen were plowing with the donkeys feeding beside them. And pay attention. When the Sabines raids us, they stole all the animals and killed all the farmhands. I am the only one who's came to tell you. And while he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. The fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the shepherds, and I'm the only one who's came to tell you. And then, while he was still speaking, a third messenger arrived with this news. Three bands of Chaldean riders have stolen your camels and killed your servants. I am the only one who's came to tell you. But then, while he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were feasting in the oldest brother's home. Suddenly, a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed and all your children are dead. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Are you kidding me? Is this real? He was ready to write the book, Why Bad Things Happen to Good People, don't you think? He had everything. 
but let's discover what was his response. How did Job, did Job respond? Job chapter 1, verse 20 says, Job stood up, tore his robe in grief. Then he shaved his head and fell to the ground to cry. He cried? No, he worshipped. He fell to the ground to worship. And then he said, I came naked from my mother's womb, and I will be naked when I live. The Lord gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. Wow. During 41 chapters, Job was having raw conversations with God. You can go a little deeper if you want to read during this week. For today, we are going to fast forward to the end of this book. So we're going to the chapter 42. And let's see how Job's life ended. Verse 12 says, So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life, even more than in the beginning. Job lived 140 years after that, living to see four generations of his children and grandchildren. Then he died, and pay attention to this, an old man who have lived a long, full life. Job repeated God's goodness remembered God's goodness and rejoiced in God's goodness. He chose to live on the God goodness, God's goodness effect. He chose to see the goodness around. Okay, that was, that was hard, right? Let's visit another of my friends. Are you ready? Okay, I want to introduce to you Jeremiah. Jeremiah, let's see his life. He was one of the prophets who was called by God to speak to the people of Israel. He witnessed all the consequences of the invasion, destruction, and sin. He was called to speak truth and life over them. And he wrote a book with five poems. And it's called Lamentations. And let's see how was Jeremiah's response to all the destruction that he was seeing around. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 19 says, The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. That's a raw conversation. Yet... I still dare to hope when I remember this and pay attention. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search for him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. Jeremiah chose to live on the God's goodness effect. He repeated God's goodness. He remembered God's goodness. And he rejoiced in God's goodness. Let's visit another friend. I'm sure that you already know this next friend. And if you don't, today is the day. It's a great opportunity for you to meet him. Jesus. Is he your friend too? If not, don't leave today without getting to know him. 
Okay, let's talk about his life. Jesus, when he was walking on this earth, he was 100% man and 100% God. He experienced what is to live on this earth without sin. He knew what was coming, and he had been prepared for 30 years, but still it was hard. He knew he needed time alone with the Father. So let's see what he did as response. Matthew chapter 26 says, Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and he said, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther, and he bowed his face to the ground, praying. Jesus praying? Yes, he was praying. And he said, my father, if, this is, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, my father, if this cup cannot be taken away, unless I drink it, your will be done. So he went to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Then he came to the disciples and said, go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, oh, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. And the highlight of this response is, your will be done. How many times Jesus prayed? Three times. Keep that number in mind. Jesus chose to embrace God's goodness. To embrace uh, God's goodness effect. And he repeated God's goodness. He remembered God's goodness, and he rejoiced in God's goodness. And I have one last friend for you. His name is Paul. Paul had everything, everything to boast about. He was the A-grade student in every class. And you can read more about his life in the book of Acts. And also, we have a sermon series, um, maybe the, from two years ago, that is called Sent. So you can go back and try to visit it. But today, we are going to focus in the small parts of his life. So let's read together 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And it says, whatever anyone else dares to boast about, I am speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast about, are they Hebrews? So I am. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, being in prison more frequently, being flogged more se severely, and being exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger in the sea and in danger from false, false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and had often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Wow. We have another candidate to write the book Why Bad Things Happen to Good People, right? That's so hard. 
But he loved God. But let's discover his response. Second Corinthians chapter 12 says, Even if I should choose to boast, I will not be a fool, because I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceit, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord. How many times? Three, just like Jesus. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, and pay attention, my grace is sufficient for you. I'm going to read it again. My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul found the truly source of strength. Before we go further, let's take a break. Don't you think? We have been reading so many hard stuff. And I want to tell you a story. Have you ever heard the words, I'm sure that you have, please and thank you? As parents... Usually, we say to our kids, every time that you, have, you are going to ask for something, you, you need to say, please. And when you get what you're asking for, you need to say, thank you. And usually, as a parent, we are doing a great job. We can say that we are doing a great job when we're teaching our kids to be thankful. And that works for the earthly life that we're living. But in a spiritual life, when we're talking about God, and when we come to ask something, works different. As a mom, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I made promises, and I can't make it. But God is different. He is perfect. He is the perfect father. So when we ask, we think thank before we get because we know that he is good and he will provide and how do I know that because Paul's life teaches teaches us how he learned it we are not perfect God is perfect he is the perfect father and Paul didn't just choose to live on God's goodness. He repeated God's goodness. He remembered God's goodness. And he rejoiced in God's goodness. But also he had something. He gave thanks. Let's read together Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Even when we don't get really quick what we are asking for, we can thank. Thanks. Thanksgiving. It's a spiritual, very spiritual word. Paul repeated God's goodness. He remembered God's goodness. And he rejoiced in God's goodness. Paul knew that God's goodness 
didn't have to do anything with good things that happen that are happening around. Even in jail and with the thorn in his flesh, he repeated and he remembered and he rejoiced and he gave thanks. And I have a, one last story for you. I was when I was getting ready to prepare the sermon and write it down, I found the story of life of this missioner. His name is Alan Francis Gardner, and you'll see his picture on the screen. He was British, and he was born in 1794, and he passed away at 18, uh, 1851. He was a British missionary who went to South America and spent around five years in an island sharing the gospel. But let me read to you what happened in his last missionary trip. In his last trip, they arrived at an island where they found that the natives were hostile. The climate was severe and the country barren. After six months, they didn't have enough supplies. And the ship with additional supplies was delayed. After relocating the men, gradually died for starvation. Gardiner, the last survivor, is believed to have died on September 6, 1851. On October 21st, the ship, John Davidson, arrived to resupply the group and found all the men dead by starvation. All the sailors could do was to bury the bodies and bring away Gardiner's journal that was found next to him. And the highlight of this story is what they found, the last quote that they found in his journal. And it's there in the screen for you. Psalm 34, 10. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry. But those who trust in the Lord will lack, will lack no good thing. Even through his starvation, he knew that God was good. Can you imagine to be in an island, trusting God? You left your life behind to go and share the gospel, and you are dying by starvation? He was in touch with God's goodness. He chose to see and to embrace God's goodness effect. He repeated God's goodness. He remembered God's goodness, and he rejoiced in God's goodness. Just as Habakkuk, just as Jeremiah, just as Jesus. One of my favorite verses in Habakkuk is in the last chapter and says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. Can you stand with me? Please. And I want to encourage you this week just to embrace the God's goodness effect by choosing to do three things. The first one, to repeat God's goodness. How? Through prayer. You need to pray three times per, per day? Do it. You need to pray five, ten? Do it. Choose to repeat God's goodness. Two, Choose to remember God's goodness. How? Journaling, singing, worshiping. And number three, choose to rejoice in God's goodness. How? Take time to be alone. Walk, look into the nature. Serve. Spend time with people. And give thanks. Because when we repeat, remember, and rejoice, the real thanksgiving happens. 
Are you ready to give thanks? Let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your word that is alive, for your word that comforts our hearts, that even when we are dealing with hard situations, we can know that we can trust in your goodness, even in the hard times, even when nothing is happening as we are expecting, we can trust that you are good, that you are faithful. I pray, God, that you will continue to speak to our hearts, that we will know that you are around, that you are close to us. And this week especially, we decide to pay attention in your goodness around. Not in the red cars. We want to fix our eyes in you. Thank you. Thank you, God. In your name I pray. Amen.
So that's our series on Habakkuk. Um, if you're like me over the last six, seven weeks, you've had some raw conversations with God. But God is a big God, and he can take it. And the good news is, yes, Jesus, we love you, but he loves you more. So he can take that. Um, we're so glad you are here. If you're visiting, we'd love to, just a reminder, we'd love to meet you at the welcome table. Um, another reminder that if you are physically able and you have time, if you could stack your row of chairs into stacks of seven, after we're done, that would be awesome. And before we go, we're going to take a minute and pray for our offering. One of the ways that God calls us to show thanksgiving is by being generous and living on, his, on faith in him. And you can do that by giving. If you'd like to give, you can give at the table in the back. If you're watching online, there's a link. You can also give on the app. Can you pray with me? Father, we're, we receive with such gratitude the offering that is given to us in your name, Lord. And we ask you to always help us be good stewards of whatever is provided. Help us be a generous people. Help us be a people of faith. And help us use these resources to always point to you to build your kingdom in the New River Valley and around the world, Lord. And we're thankful that you're a God that can handle our raw conversations. That when we're, when we're fearful, when we're angry, when we're hurting, we can come to you and you can say, I love you. You can give us the answer that, not the answer we want to hear, but the one that is best for us. Sometimes that's no, sometimes it's wait. Sometimes it's even if. But we will always follow you and praise you because you are good and you are faithful. And we thank you for that. So we love you, Father, and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Pastor Rod and Pastor Renee will be back next week. New series. Make sure you invite someone. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>